I mean, can't do it. It's a pretty good win. Oh well, listen. The thing is, I didn't win. actually watch the game, but I was there. Like I was, I was like checking the score on my phone, and when they were down, I was like, they're gonna, they're gonna win. It's they're gonna win. That's what they do. It's not the same, man. That's it's what watching they do. They it win. play by play. I know, but yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyway, <laughs> hi. Hello, my name's Liam Billingham. Um, I am the adult education specialist at Brick Arts Media in downtown Brooklyn. Um, and this is Doc Talk. It's a program where we highlight some of the films and filmmakers who have participated in our documentary intensive program. We've done two so far. This is Lenny Moore. Hi, Lenny. Hey, what's happening? Lenny uh, was a participant in our second documentary intensive, which ran for five months in 2016. Um, it was the longer of our two intensives. And what we're going to do is we're going to chat with Lenny about the experience, him, his work as a filmmaker, and we're going to watch the film and kind of talk through it. Um, so that's going to be the plan for today. Hi, Lenny. What's happening? How are you? It's been a minute. It's been a, it's been a while. New <laughs> Happy New Year, dude. Well, New Year. Yeah, New Year. It's new. Um, so <laughs> starting with, uh, before we jump into the film, do you want to talk a little bit, like, talk a little bit about yourself, where you're from, well, um, all this stuff. I'm the Brooklyn guy my whole life. Mm -hmm. Brooklyn, born, raised. Where were you I born in Brooklyn? Anywhere. I don't know. It's kind of sketchy. I, well, it was Brooklyn Jewish Hospital, but I don't know where we were living. Probably you don't know where you were Park living? Park Place or something like that. Okay. Either Park Place or Lincoln. We're have right you, here. We're locals. Have you ever lived anywhere besides Brooklyn? I tried to live in Queens for two months. And where? I packed up. And I think it was Jamaica Estates. Okay. And I ran. Why? Because it was just too quiet. It's uh, just too quiet. Yeah, Queens is quiet. I oh, lived in Astoria man. for four years. We, it didn't. It, it, it could have been in the suburbs. Two months. We had to get out of there. Two months? Yeah, I had to get out of there. So you... You moved for two months, and then you were like, oh, but we better find a place back in Brooklyn? Yeah, I was young, though. I was 17. I was, uh, like, renting a basement for, like, 400 bucks a month. Wow. I was, like, a messenger. Okay. So it was easy to just pack up and say, auntie, what you doing with that room? Okay. It's <laughs> pretty good. Yeah. So yeah. you've lived, otherwise, yeah. you've lived in Brooklyn your whole... Yeah, my whole life. So whole, what, what is it about Brooklyn? Years. Uh, man, where do I start? I mean... At the beginning. <laughs> I was a baby. It was in 1975. <laughs> the year was 1975. I, I don't know. I, just, I guess um, I just did the friends, mm -hmm. the, 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 the community. I felt like everyone was family mm -hmm. growing up. Uh, the schools were great. Uh, I had a lot of friends. I mean, uh, we, there was a lot of violence in the 70s and 80s, but... You know, it right. made my skin tough enough to do some of the stuff I do today. So, when what do you do today? Yeah. Well, right now uh, I'm all over the place because uh, in a day I'm like a division manager or MPS manager for this uh, tech company mm -hmm. that installs you know office solutions across the country, and I manage like 320 sites. But 320 not, sites. Yeah. Whoa. It's a pretty tough job. Yeah. Pretty tough. So you job. bouncing around a lot? I'm all over the place. It's mm -hmm. insane. And then. Um, in the evenings, uh, for the past 20 years, I've been a music producer. And then, uh, I guess the past six years, I've been experimenting with this thing called video. <laughs> this thing, <laughs> thing called thing video. Because, you know, I don't, I don't want to make the pros upset with me when I call myself a professional videographer. But mm -hmm. I, I like to say I fall in those lanes. Uh, well, it's a flexible term these days. Yeah. So that's why, I, you know, I try to just tag myself as a media producer mm -hmm. because I, I just, that's, I, I, I'm great at taking an idea mm -hmm. and then producing or creating some type of product from it. So, so before, how'd you get started in video? This thing uh, called video. Man, I was starting a record label. I had this crazy idea to start a record label. And the artists we were working with, I was trying to get some music videos produced. Mm -hmm. And one of them worked at Adorama. And we tried to get professional videographers to shoot our videos, but the estimates are like 10,000, 12,000. Yeah. Then they wanted to sync it to mm -hmm. this. And it, it, it just like... So the, the high-end Yeah, price. it was just ridiculous. It was just out of reach. Mm -hmm. It didn't make sense. And he was working there, and they told him, listen, if you wanted to rent some gear, we would give you a great rate to rent it. And they didn't right. put him through all of the, you know, st critical things they put regular customers through so I, I rented a camera like a sony ex2 for a week mm -hmm. and i just shot like 10 music videos wow <laughs> and then i figured out how to edit them that's amazing that's and the way like, to do it though yeah it's like it was a tough four months but we got like so you didn't have any formal training 
Not whatever really. that just, means. Yeah, just playing with YouTube cameras and, and stuff. No, nah, I never really did YouTube okay, cool. or anything like that. But um, yeah, just kind of just just jumped in, and then I just started to produce like uh, these online TV shows like on YouTube, like I did Windows Red Talk Show, Yes Our TV, and they, they kind of saw those music videos, and they were right. like, "Hey, would you be my videographer for this?" And then I started to become at higher capacity at those shows. So I, became, right. I went from being just the guy holding the camera to like the guy that's like, no, we're doing this all wrong. So what and was... I be became a producer of those shows. So. Okay. And that was at Brick or this was pre-Brick? This is pre-Brick. This so like, how'd you get uh, involved with Brick and about Brick Media Education? Yeah. About three years ago, there, I had this uh, uh, radio show podcast called Alarm Show. Mm -hmm. So I started this with... Antoine Joyce, uh, Charlie Biggs, and uh, Squeak. We started this about 10 years ago. And about three years ago, we decided, you know, because everyone who was doing this podcast online mm -hmm. thing with just it streaming online, we was like, you know what, let's try to see if we can make this a video mm -hmm. friendly or a TV version of what we do on this radio thing. And I came here to learn how to do that. Okay. To produce, like, a TV show, in a sense. And then... Uh, I took so I took the field production class, the studio class. I don't think I had to take the editing or anything like that, but but yeah, mm. I just kind of stayed around and I helped other people produce their shows. Uh, I helped uh, Gifted and Uplifted TV mm -hmm. do their shows. I helped Tawana with uh, uh, Caribbean, Caribbean video, video mm. hit show. I've been directing that for I think oh I didn't two know that years now. I did not know you directed that. Yeah, and then uh, how often does that shoot? Uh, not much. I think we usually just bank up a bunch of shows, six or seven gotcha. shows within a two-month span. And then edits. And, yeah, and yeah. she does a lot of off-site shooting. And, um, cool. She goes to those carnivals. It's insane. It's intense. Um, so so you did that for a while, and then you, you applied and got into the documentary intensive. So how would you describe that class? Not like... That, like, it changed how I looked at producing everything even okay. including music now i've been producing music since professionally since 97 wow and i kind of just said it feels good right. you know so i did it and um but the doc class made me hone in and focus on what how, there was like a strategy to how mm -hmm. the the strategy of the reveal Ah, tell and me I more. never I really had that. Right. I never like. I, I always thought that you know your first bar, your second bar. You, you think I thought everything song structure. So like strategic story, right. the telling. Yeah, the, that whole reveal and making weight and creating moments of emotion. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand those as much until I was sitting in a room with like a room full of people that had this insane passion for documentaries. I never was a person to watch right. documentaries. I I, I thought that. Being in a documentary class would help me to develop, like, better stories and music videos. Okay. Because the music videos are kept seeming the same. Uh, so you felt he's like walking down the block. Well, you were he's sort of right. So he's got the crew behind him. I was like, wait a minute. How do I figure out how to make a story, a visual story, within this content that I'm producing? So there was sort of like it was kind of like you were making. To some extent, the same music video or yeah, the, the same, same choice. Type. There was a rhythm or a formula yeah, or yeah. something like that. They all felt the same, and I felt mm -hmm. like I needed to do something different. And okay. I felt uh, learning how to create a documentary would kind of force me to, to, to see right. how to make a visual story. So as I remember it, you were when you came into the class, you were like more comfortable technically than maybe other people in the class. Like you had a better understanding of how the gear works. Yeah. Obviously, as a music producer, you know how sound works, yeah. you know how audio yeah. worked. So for you, would you say the biggest thing that you got from it was more, let's say, this, the aesthetics or the storytelling? Not even aesthetics, but maybe the, how do you, the, st the storytelling side of it. I'd never really understood why people like documentaries. <laughs> now I do. Sure. And I didn't know how difficult it was to try to tell a story that way. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that there were so many different ways to do a documentary. Okay. So, yeah, it was like, I guess, it was, I, I, I'm not, I took a lot from it. Like, mm -hmm. great people. Yeah. Amazing. We had an amazing group. Yeah. That we're still really cl close friends. We stay in contact with each other. Mm -hmm. uh, you did a great job of keeping us together. <laughs> you guys did it yourself. No, you was like, cut it out. Get to this. Yeah. <laughs> so it was like, yeah, I mean, I think of. Uh, I would recommend anyone to just just try it. Like it's um, especially if you're serious about 
the quality of the content of mm -hmm. the visual message you're trying to send out, right. it's like it's extremely important to, to, to understand the system that makes it a documentary. Or sort of building a... Um, yeah, I, I didn't know that there approach. was like, yeah, like, you know, do a documentary has a criteria. This, this is what makes it a documentary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was like, at first you'd just be like, it's a documentary. Right. Yeah. Well, we <laughs> now I can yeah, say yeah, yeah. that is a documentary cool. because it holds to this criteria. Totally. Yeah. Um, do you want to watch your doc? So we'll watch it. Oh man, you're gonna embarrass gonna me like it. that. We're <laughs> gonna watch it up here. We're gonna, my, we're gonna watch it up this here. This is my and then first we're documentary. Gonna, but think of it like instead of it's not like we're gonna. Prank, I'm just gonna ask you some questions while we watch it because I watched it again yesterday. Okay. And I hadn't seen it since the screening. I hadn't gone back and watched. I haven't gone back. The only film that I've seen since the screening was. Um, I think Ted's and Susan's. Um, and so I, seeing it not in the context of hosting, I was like, oh, like I kind of had forgotten some things. So I figured we'd just talk, talk our way through it, and then it'll probably finish before we wrap up cool. with the ideas. But we'll just, we'll, just, we'll just go through it. Are we going to, and, and we'll, yeah, we'll talk from there. Okay. So first thing I want to ask My name is, is Roy I, I noticed that the title is, First of all, okay, so this is Roy. He's your main subject. He's basically in every single shot. Uh, who's Roy? Or how do you know Roy? People can watch the documentary and learn about Roy. But. Roy is a close friend of mine. I've known him for 20 years. Um, I met him, I think it was like 93, 90. Mm -hmm. It was before like, I really got as a professional musician. And we've kind of had that travel of producing music, with terrible contracts, bad songs, good songs. Mm -hmm. And he kind of just traveled kind of that, the same kind of music, kind of, you know, you know, we right. have our colleague. Similar of, path. Right, the same path. And then, um, so about uh, 13, 14 years ago, he, he, got, he was really ill, right. near death ill, uh, with his kidneys that failed. And How long ago was that? This is about 13, 14 years okay, ago. Okay, wow, yeah. And, you know, we were all young. He was uh, very athletic. He was like... Uh, the guy all the chicks loved, mm -hmm. best dressed dude, <clears throat> sports dude. Right. And um, what's interesting is I didn't think to to um, choose him as the subject. It was like my wife was like, why don't you just ask man? He had that crazy uh, 13 years waiting for a kidney. Like people need to hear that story. And like what's interesting is it's, it happens a lot. Like, a lot of people around me are, ha are suffering from kidney failure. And I said, you know what? Let me find... I didn't know that I would learn as much as I did from him. Mm -hmm. And um, and that... So what'd you learn from him? I just didn't know how seriously ill he was. Like, you okay. know people are sick, and he's going to dialysis, and you assume that he's okay mm -hmm. because he's going to the doctor, he's not complaining, and he's still coming to the shows, he's still coming to the studio. Right. And... I mean, we see, I see, I saw the lifestyle changes. Right. So I saw him go from like this kind of cool basketball, hip hop, a back, chill okay. in the cut. Right. So I watched the, you know, you know, the relationships and the personality changes, but I didn't know about how serious his condition was and gotcha. how he really felt about his life until I sat down and asked the questions. And it's interesting, because it's like, you can know someone for 20 years, mm -hmm. and you don't hone into one specific thing in their life that they consider traumatic, and you ask them about it, and you keep digging, you dig, and you dig. So as It's a, like you learn a lot more than you thought. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah, it seems it's like... It's like the whole, our friendship has changed since This is what I was gonna ask you. It's like, as a documentarian, he's a friend, but you're viewing him through a different lens. Yeah. As, as you've made this talk about him, right? So is it cha it's changed your relationship? It's definitely changed our friendship. Mm -hmm. How? I mean, it's like, we talk about everything now. Right. So it's like, we used to just kind of just laugh about things, skirt skim over the it. Surface, yeah, skim right. the surface. Everything's cool. Ladies drive me crazy. I know mine's driving me crazy too. It's all good. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Have a shot, make a new song. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay. So, so it's like deeper. Now it's like, right. it's like, yo, did you uh, hang out with the kids at the school this week? Did you? Okay. So it's like we talk about, like, so he does this thing where he's mentoring kids on Saturdays and telling them about eating healthy and understanding your diet and going to the doctor. And it's kind of cool because he doesn't, he didn't even know his impact with the kids until they told him. Right. Like, hey, listen, you need to be here every Saturday. These kids love you. That's amazing. 
He's still doing it? Yeah, still doing it, yeah. And is he working? I got working? some amazing shots with him with the kids. Are you going to expand the doc yeah, to yeah, include that yeah. stuff? Well, he's forcing me to. He's not allowing me not to expand. That's good, though. <laughs> so he's like, oh, we need to add this. We need to add this. We need to get back <laughs> into the studio. So he's like a new co-producer, I guess. That's so. great. Yeah, so then that's good. That's like a good... Yeah. Um, so with that in mind, one thing I noticed watching this, there is... There's a, there's a moment at the end, it's probably coming up, where he talks about, like, oh, make sure you drink plenty of water. He talks a little bit about, like, this is, you know, to, to pr preventative steps that anyone can take to avoid these kinds of problems, you know. And it's not like it's a huge part of the film. But there's a small element to your doc that ha it has a PSA quality, but I don't think of it as a public service announcement. I think of it as a, as a documentary that is sort of speaking to a larger societal issue and I'm wondering if like did it did it take that approach while you were working on it where you felt like you had to outright address the he, issue he was he was he said I would do this but I I want to make sure that people know why okay I have this condition so he's always had you know a, a kidney he had like he always had really bad kidneys and he mm -hmm. was taking medication and it was when he was a teenager when he started to hang out and party with friends and right. do, it was, you know, the music life for us got kind of intense and we mm -hmm. were doing the shows and the clubs and all the stuff and he was living the street life. He didn't take his meds. He stopped drinking water as much. Right. Uh, he moved out of his grandmother's house because she was the one who kind of enforced for him to kind of like, your health, your health, your health. And when he moved out, he kind of just ignored his health. How old is he? At the time that happened to him, he was 21. He's okay. now 38, I think, 38, okay. 39. So. And he's on the mend, mostly. He's better now. He's, well, yeah, he's better now. Right. He's walking around. He's chilling. He's right. like, right, right, right. You no, know, he walks to the studio from Red Hook, and the studio's in uh, Dumbo. So. <laughs> so, no joke. Yeah, it's That's like a 20-minute walk. He's like, he's up. Uh, yeah, he's doing really well, man. I mean. I didn't know it was like sometimes people get sick because doctors make mistakes, and I was th yeah, yeah. I, it was my perception that they had you taking this medication. This is probably what destroyed your kidneys. When right the whole time it was he screwed up, right, right, right. And he wanted that to be clear that I screwed up. Okay, and it's interesting because I was I was thinking about this earlier. There's two things that there's a lot I like about the doc, but two things that I particularly like are. The shots like this one where he's just looking at the camera and the shots where you're interviewing him where he's, it's like his eyes and his face are in focus, but it all starts to fall off. It's very shallow. And so what prompted, what prompted some of those choices like this right here? It's great that using the word shallow works because that's his rapper name. <laughs> Is it really? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> but so, well, was so, it intentional or is it Yeah, because you... uh, I wanted to create space between him and his environment. Okay. By putting the, and then, um, and I wanted people to see that he went from this blurred state to being, a, having a clear focus. Right. So that's why I shot it that way. Oh, so it's like the out of focus sort out of, of focus, represents. Right, represents him not taking care of himself. Okay. And then we went to focus to show that he's not like that now. Because I think, what I, I like that, I think that there's like, um, th th there could be, I feel like some documentarians or some people would look at that as like, it's like out of focus is a mistake. No, But when it's a very clear, and not in the case of this yeah. documentary, but I think there's like a perception. Oh. But the fact that like, it's a very distinct choice to be like, we're going to go from focus, out of focus, yeah. into focus. We tried that sh well I tried that shot w in different environments and different backgrounds I think it worked best in the studio mm -hmm. shot so cool we, yeah no it works really really well why do you call it a reflection because it's him thinking about his life and his mistakes okay interesting for me the documentary was about um, learning to deal with change because that's how I came into it mm -hmm. I wanted to learn about how people deal with changes in their lives. And that right. was a pretty extreme change from him. He went, it was a drastic change from him, and I watched the changes happen. And then he had this, after getting the kidney, the, it, like, the change didn't stop. Like, right. his whole body changed. He had to get accustomed to, to his body feeling this different mm -hmm. way. And he's, they can't, there was a time where he couldn't even walk. His feet were always sore um, from, the, you know, from the dialysis treatment. And um, he went from like having like ter terrible foot pain to like 
I don't feel any pain in my feet. Right, right, right. <laughs> so right, it was right. like, and then like a year after the kidney, he's like, he's like, man, I feel so great. It's just like, I, I, he can't even believe how well he feels. Because he has perspective on right. it. Right. Because he felt so For 13 kind of years, he's kind of went just this slow downward path into everything. Right being slower or taking his time with everything. Do you see that change like, in his personality and his, the way he... No, he's still the same personality, still laid back, but right. I, I don't think the criterion factor is anything to do with right. <laughs> <laughs> And maybe some of the medication that he's... <laughs> right. Yeah. So, um, w one of the things with this class is we, we, yeah, we talked a lot about shooting and shooting how to shoot and how to edit, but we also spent a lot of the time we talked about what a documentary is, but I think another thing that we talked about a lot was like, what is your point of view on the material? So I'm curious, like, and this is a hard thing to answer and maybe it's a little too analytical, but it's like watching it now, watching it again, continuing to work on it, like what do you see as your like main, what do you think your point of view is or what's, what do you think your biggest like, oh, this is what I brought to this documentary aside from capturing and editing it? Do you know what I mean? Wow. This is the, that was the reason why I put the reflection on there. Mm -hmm. Because in the beginning, I thought I was creating something. And then when I finished editing, I felt like he created it. Oh. So uh, it's kind of like you're the... I, I'm just like the guy who's... I felt like I was just like, you know, they have the, the autobiography. I'm right. just the guy who's with the pen and the paper. Like, hey, tell me your story. You're creating the space yeah. for the... Yeah. And keeping things like... Yeah. In the lane. Yeah. Because cool. he, because he, he, I thought I was, I thought I was directing this thing. And th that's the amazing thing about what I learned in the documentary classes. You're not really directing a documentary. The documentary is directing you. Right. <laughs> so right. I, I never worked in a space like that. This was the mm -hmm. first time where I didn't really have control of what was going to happen. I didn't have no control. So, right. Um, outside of just, oh, do this shot. Right. I was in control of some of the, the shots. Right. Or, you know, a little bit of back focus here. But once the mic turned on and I asked a question, I got my story. And there's a certain amount of, like, you're, you make the film you're going to make, and you're talking about change, but there's also the change of, like, you have to respond to what's actually happening. Yeah. If you show up and, and Roy's in a bad mood, it's a different film than it would have been if he's in a good mood, right? <laughs> yeah. Right, I would assume? Shout out to Roy. Right. <laughs> we had those. <laughs> Totally. So, yeah. Man, not today, man. <laughs> not today. Um, so, so part of it, I, I like that idea that you're not directing the documentary. The documentary is yeah, directing yeah. you. Do you? Um, that 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 brings to mind one of my favorite moments in the film is when he holds up the pictures. Oh yeah. Where'd that was, come from? It was. Uh, at first, I said, uh, I said, listen, I need pictures, like. Uh -huh. To just, you know, some pictures that I could scan, that I could just use. Okay. You know, we'll, we'll go through them. And he was, like, going through the pictures. And I just turned the camera on. Uh, okay. <laughs> and then I was like, hold that picture to the camera. I want to see that. Okay. <laughs> so that's kind of how they came. It was like, I didn't know I was going to get a shot with him going through the pictures. I was like, find some pictures that I could use for the doc. Right. So he was just going through it. He was trying to find pictures that he knew that people wouldn't have a problem because, you know, you know, some people, they don't want their pictures on. Right, right, you know? right, so right. I was like, hey, find some pictures that we can use. And I was like, oh, let me see that picture. Hold to the camera. It's a great setup. It and tells then, you a lot about this guy really quickly. He just kept throwing the pictures out. I said, like, oh, let me see another picture. Right. Let me see another picture. And then, like, I found the moments he was talking about those moments in yeah. the doc and just paired them with the photos. It works really yeah. well. It's, yeah, see, it was moments like that that mm -hmm. just, like, I, I didn't have the foresight. I, I didn't plan that. But it just kind of you're not directing the documentary. Yeah, the documentary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the same yeah. thing with the, uh, or not the same thing at all, but the scars jump out. That's a really like powerful we, moment. We had to, to shoot me. that twice. Really? The first time we shot it, it was. Um, I don't know. It was just like I was like, we'll shoot this again. Mm -hmm. Didn't feel right? I think it was too much going on, like, in the space that we were okay. shooting. So it was like someone else in another room. They watched TV, and it was, like, back, mm -hmm. back and forth. Then it was hot. His AC wasn't working. It was, like, 90 degrees outside. Ugh. It was just, like... 
So you didn't get it. it, it I, I felt like it just, it wasn't clear enough. Mm-hmm. So I was like, let's shoot it again. And then I was like, you know what? Let's just retake the whole interview at the studio. And that's how I got all the shots in the studio. Oh, okay. And that's how kind of the two kind of environments came together. Right. And then what I was like, hey, you know what? Maybe I'll take those moments where he's feeling the moments, the, the pain moments where there's like this, this deep insight and kind of use the studio because the feel of it with the kind of the green tone of it, mm-hmm. it creates a different kind of feel. It's, yeah, it's very different. So I was like, I'm going to use this for the moments where it's intense. Yeah. And then, you know, at home, I was just like, those like the kind of just, we're just talking. Right. Yeah, no, you can yeah. feel that different, like, especially watching it a second time. You can feel the difference. I actually stole that idea from The Matrix. Ooh. With the blue and the green background. Wow. It's one of my favorite movies. I wonder, it's a great movie. <laughs> I wonder if any documentarian has ever been like, my documentary is influenced by the film The Matrix? Yeah. Probably. Uh, it's, it's, my, it's my favorite movie. It's so. a great movie. <laughs> it's an amazing so, movie. But, um, yeah. So, what else did I want to... So, what's next? I mean, you're still working on this? Actually, this moved me into doing... Um, I'm doing, like, this short documentary for Grandmaster Flash now, right? So, really? Yeah, so it's like... You're what? doing a documentary for him? Well, yeah, because the thing is, well, I was always, I was been, I've been an engineer, his music engineer for about eight years now, so. I didn't know that. Yeah, <laughs> so really good Lenny. friends. Yeah, we're really good friends. Wow. And I've been like cutting away at this get down stuff and producing tracks for this thing, and there's been dr- no sleep, man. No yeah. sleep. It's cause that's by, amazing. But April tenth. Should make a documentary about yeah. him. Yeah. Well, we're already, we're already doing. That's it. what you're doing. So now. we did one for his tour. Okay. Oh, uh, like the 30 seconds of his tour, okay. and then now cool. we're working on a doc for him. That's next. So, in the meantime, we can watch your doc on YouTube at Brooklyn Free Speech. So you go to YouTube.com, you go to Brooklyn Free Speech. The name of the documentary is uh, "Learning to Believe in Change." Yes. A reflection by Roy Izari. Yes, Izari. Lenny, thanks, man. No, this is thank awesome. you, Can't man. Wait to see the Grandmaster Flash. Oh. I could yeah. give you a sneak peek, actually. What? I love one. Yeah. Do it. Are we still on? Oh, bye. Okay, for sure.